Um, yes. People who hate fat people, including doctors, they hate fat people because they believe that being overweight is a moral issue. It's a character issue. It's a product of your choices. That's why people hate GLP-1s. That's why people hate Ozempic and Munjaro and all those drugs. Because it allows fat people to lose weight without suffering. I can kind of understand where this person is coming from. A lot of people do consider that if you gain weight, you should lose weight the hard way since you put it on the hard way. And a lot of people do look at like semi-glutide and the other Manjaros and uh, Ozempics as like a cheat or a hack or like an easy mode or living your life on recruit difficulty to lose that weight without doing any effort at all to actually lose the weight. So a lot of people look down upon that. But my opinion has been the same since I've first seen these like major weight loss drugs since Ray Liotta was talking about. It. I think it was Ray Liotta on those commercials a few years back. Uh, RIP Ray Liotta, by the way. Um, I personally don't care. It's your health. You know what I'm talking about, dude? It, 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 you should probably have the agency to understand that even though any people are going to look at you and morally think that you're disgusting or bad because you put on this weight organically, but you're not going to take off the weight organically, fuck them. I mean, these people are terrible, disgusting people. You should have your own agency. Now, granted, um, these drugs are not like a be-all, end-all, fix everything, all issues, but they're most definitely going to be things that are going to help you tremendously. Um, if you can get a prescription for them, but legitimately, legitimately from a doctor, then that's great. That should be the, the course you go to is no problem at all. I'm never going to look down upon somebody that has the medical route, uh, that wants to like get surgery or if they want to take these weight loss drugs, it's your health, bro. Like, what am I going to do? Tell you that you, you're, you're, you're morally failing because you're putting your health up above everybody else. No, fuck them, dude. It's your health. You should have the ability, if it's there, take whatever crutch you want. And I've always said this. Whatever crutch is there, that should be your option. If you want to take that crutch, go ahead. Um, back when affirmative action was a thing, and I didn't really, I don't necessarily like affirmative action. But if, if you were black and you got into a school because you were black or a woman or whatever, or a Native American, I don't care, dude. That's awesome. I'm happy that you had the opportunity to have to go into a school that you normally wouldn't have been able to, but you, you are now. That's great. I think anybody should take whatever crutch they can if it's there. Uh, if you want to, of course. So I'm never going to look at it. I don't necessarily agree with doctors hating fat people. I don't think many doctors hate fat people. I don't think that's like a thing. They may not like necessarily the fact that you have the weight on you. I wouldn't say that's them hating the fat or hating you. That's kind of crazy. Like a doctor going to medical school for like eight years of his life, eight years of his life. And then he comes out of it super biased because he doesn't like fat people anymore. No, he probably just <laughs> probably just understands that it's just really, really bad for your health. So I wouldn't agree with that part, but I do understand what she's saying overall. And I also really, really um, love it when people record themselves in their cars and then they're wearing these like glared glasses and I can see exactly them recording themselves, them recording themselves while recording themselves and then recording themselves because like it's a reflection consistently over and over and over again. And they hate that. When I tell people I lost all this weight from fasting because it decreases my hunger over time, when I first say that I did it by fasting, I am noble. I have suffered for the cause of weight loss. When I get around to the part about how it slowly decreased my hunger over time, all of a sudden fasting for many people suddenly is unhealthy. That's not good for you. I wonder who says that though. It's probably fat people, right? Most fat people would probably say that. Like if you're if you're fasting, I think most people in general don't like fasting because it has negative context behind it and uh, it's like you not eating in general, but fasting is not necessarily bad as long as you're recouping the the calories that you didn't eat already um, in different periods of the day. Maybe like through intermittent fasting, I think. I don't know if that's maybe what she's, what she's talking about. She might just be talking about fasting in general where she doesn't eat for long stretches of time um, where you're like skipping meals. I don't know if that's necessarily good or bad. I don't know like many studies on that. I do know many people that have done intermittent fasting and they've had great success with that, but I do, I do remember very vividly one time going to the gym with one of my friends and he had been on a fast for about two days at that point and he was about to pass out, like literally on the Smith machine. He was like lifting the shit up and I had to like stop him from lifting it up. This was a big man. This is a really big guy that had no problem lifting heavy weights before, um, but because he had taken those two days of no eating at all, and I mean zero eating as well, um, he couldn't even lift like the bar. The bar itself was like struggle for him. And it was crazy to see that he was like almost about to pass out. So I, I would recommend if you're ever going to fast, you should probably do it safely. You know, maybe do some research, maybe contact the doctor, see if that's safe for you. Understand what fasting is, do some research because it's not some, it's not something as simple as like cut and dry as like, I'm just not going to eat for a few days. And you know what? A lot of people tell you that if you fast for like the first day, it's going to be agonizing, but the second, third, fourth day is like, great. I don't know. I've never done it per. So I can't really say for sure. You know, the same people who said like, hey, why don't you just put your fork down like my entire life? But yeah, to answer your question, people who hate fat people want them to suffer for the 
moral crime of being fat. I just, I don't think that it's very many people that are doing that though, to be honest. I think the main people that do not like Ozempic or any of these like semi-glutide variants are probably fat people, right? Because they're looking at this as like a, I've been invested in this fat community for so long and now suddenly there's this magical drug that will completely benefit fat people optimally for, for, for presumably no defects. And if there is defects, very, very limited defects compared to what the defects would have been if I just kept the weight on. And they probably don't like that. A lot of them don't. Because their communities are built off of this. Their communities are built off of them being fat. And now suddenly there's this magical drug that can lower your 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 weight um, consistently, which is basically just an appetite suppressant, right? And I think they probably are threatened by it. A lot of them are. A lot of them are really, really threatened by the fact that it's very easy. Or not easy, but you know what I'm talking about. It's still very, very expensive. And depending on where you're from, you can't just get these drugs. Um, but these things are very complicated processes. And when I hear people saying this stuff, I always think... It's fat people, right? Like, who are the thin people out there that, like, morally think that you're bad because you're taking a drug to help you lose weight? I don't think so, bro. Um, would somebody think that you're bad because, like, you didn't quit alcohol cold turkey? Probably not. It's probably the same thing with, like, weed or any other drugs or any other addiction. Like, it's very obvious that people are not going to be able to, like, like overall cut out everything and then just do that that's not that's not the case so i would always err on the side of like i don't care like if you want to if you want to use semi-glutides and stuff like that i think most people don't care um and if people do care then fuck them these people are obviously not people you should be um you know catering to to begin with so they want fat people to feel hungry that's why uh, on The Biggest Loser you know how many times they would show those montages of really fat people like crying on treadmills for people who genuinely hate fat people and want them to suffer, that's about as close as those people can get to, like, corn. Fat phobia and weight stigma are moral issues. Therefore, people who hate fat people want to see them pay a penance. It, it is what it is, right? Most of those shows back in the early 2000s uh, were just there for shock value. So you watching The Biggest Loser, watching these fat people um, do exercises. The reason why these people were crying or whatever is because it was like a triumphal period, right? Like you saw where they were. You saw what they were doing to themselves. You saw how they were like living their lives and like – them transcending above that and doing the work and understanding that they were doing stuff before that that was absolutely destroying them from the inside out. It was like a big triumphant period. It's it's literally a hero's journey. Like you start off weak, depressed, disgusting, and then you build yourself up slowly but surely over time. That's what the biggest loser was. And I understand what this person is saying, definitely, it is true. Like, a lot of people were watching those shows because they're like, ha-ha, fat person crying about not being able to eat double-stuffed Oreos or something like that. Ha, super funny. I don't even know what that is, right? Definitely, you feel better. But a lot of people, there's a reason why most people watch, like, I don't know, like, reality TV, right? When I'm watching Love is Blind, which I don't recommend doing it. it, it I hate it. I hate it so bad. But when I get, when I start watching, I can't stop watching it because I just, like, I'm watching these people over and over again just choreograph these red flags. But because the nature of the show is to try to make it work as much as they possibly can. I'm seeing people, like, just doing crazy shit consistently. Like, people saying the absolute worst things to the other person. I'm just thinking, like, oh, my God, I would never say this. Yeah, everybody's doing that. Literally everybody. Whenever you watch any of these shows, you're always doing it. There's a reason why there's a thing called thin spo and fat spo. Because people are using it as motivation to gain or lose weight. Yes, this is a fact. And they were playing into it. There's a reason why people were watching... Terrible, disgusting reality TV shows. There's a reason for that, okay? It's because the, the the producers, the people that are making these shows, they know what people are coming for, okay? There's a reason why it's so lucrative to make reality TV shows when you don't have to do literally anything. There's no production value. It's literally like you, you invested like $4,000 worth of shiny blue cups and then like, I guess like an area that you made inside of some, some weird container shipment thing. And that's it. <laughs> that's the entire show. And then people just argue and create drama. It's an, it's addicting. Drama in, in general is going to be super addicting for most people. That's why they make so much of it, okay? So... I understand what you're saying, but I feel like you're reading into it too far. The general the general idea of what's going on in these shows is just because of the rise the 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 fall and rise story over and over again. And it sucks when you see that person that just can't do it. Dependence. And by the way, back in that time period, there was no Ozempic. I don't I don't think there was, right? Like early, like the biggest loser is not a show that's on the t on TV anymore. It's not it's not something that people watch uh anymore so you know and this x factor and all this other shows those are also not in the show uh, tv uh, tv shows anymore times have changed so uh, maybe back in the time you could have got away with it but nowadays no definitely not of suffering because people who ate fat people generally are thin people who've never struggled with their weight and i they disagree i disagree tremendously i understand that this person's probably working off the belief that because they're they've never been in this this like this category of obesity 
Um, they're not empathetic. They have no way to relate to this individual. But I, I disagree tremendously. I don't think that necessarily that somebody, just because they're not in that category of obesity or fatness, um, doesn't mean they can't relate or understand where that person's coming from. Uh, I, I, I just I just disagree. I think people can I think people can relate. I think most of the time it is other fat people that um, shit on other fat people that have lost weight uh, through the realms of Ozempic or whatever. I think most thin people, if you're going to say like they can't relate, most thin people have never taken Ozempic. Most thin people have no idea what it means to take these pills or like go through weight loss. But the fat people that have gone through weight loss and they've done it organically probably feel some type of superiority compared to the people that haven't. And uh, I think that's probably way more likely compared to thin people that – uh, the, the, the thin people that are, that were fat and I mean, sorry, the thin people that were never fat to begin with. I just think personally, that's probably more likely. They really overestimate the amount of effort and time they spend maintaining their thin weight relative to a overweight person trying to lose weight. And there are plenty of people in this world who hang 100% of their self-worth on the fact that they are skinny. Or I don't know any person that's... Okay, this is my anecdotal evidence really quickly. I, I, I've i never met any single person in the world that thinks that, you know, like, them being thin is, like, their number one thing they have over everybody else. Like, I, I don't know personally, bro. Uh, me, personally, it would probably be the fact that I could whoop your ass in Sparking Zero, 100%. Yeah, 1v1 me, bro. My team is way better than yours. D DP battles only. Uh, and that's not double penetrations, by the way. But, um... I, I don't know anybody that treasures their their body size over a hundred percent is kind of dramatic. I don't know about that. There it does it depends on the person, of course. But the most I've ever seen is like fifty percent, sixty percent. Or a healthy weight. But then again, like how do you even judge that? Like how do you <laughs> how do you scale that out? I don't know. So GLP ones coming along and leveling the moral playing field. Wow, do they hate that? I disagree. I think most of the time, like if I'm gonna, like I said earlier, dude, if you have to take these GLP ones and these semi-glutides or whatever, dude, go ahead. If that, if if you get prescriptions, like don't just take them. Like don't don't try to like buy them off the street from that one kid that you know. No, you know, get them or get them organically. Get them from a doctor. Get a prescription. That's what I would recommend if you want to. I would never look down and chew for that either. Some of y'all are in for a rude awakening. And I don't wish this upon you, but I just think that people nowadays are, even though we live in a very individual, individualistic age, um, everybody nowadays has the same shit. Have you guys ever noticed that? Like I've seen these these like vines, these leafy vines, uh, on so many different people's walls, dude. Like I see it consistently all the time. I don't know if it's like a millennial thing or like a Gen Z or thing, um, but I, I see it so consistently. And I just kind of wonder, like, did you buy them off Sheen? Did you buy them off Amazon? I hope you bought them off Sheen because they're really not that expensive. But I just saw the nastiest post about how Victoria's Secret... The Victoria's Secret, listen, we don't want plus size models. We don't want men on our, on the versus runway. Please listen. We want the old iconic 2000 shows. I, I can't relate to this. It's not like I was watching any of the old 2000 shows. I think I was probably 10 at the time in these like most, most of these shows. So I, I can't relate. I wasn't watching women walking down the runways, wearing weird shit, doing weird poses and, you know, walking very, very, uh, I don't know, like iconically, I guess. I don't know. I can't relate to it. I'm a dude, right? I was playing like Grand Theft Auto. I was playing Grand Theft Auto San Andreas or Vice City or something like that. And I was outside playing guns with people. And but when I mean by guns, it's like we had plastic guns and we were shooting each other or lights saber battling each other i don't know what was a fucking kid dude like i don't think anybody's really i can't relate to this is what i'm saying okay if you can relate to this maybe leave it down below so i can you know understand it fashion show shouldn't have fat people and it had almost a million likes it's, pro it's probably because like maybe they look at that as like the golden age but the way i like to look at it right is back in the 60s 70s and 80s um a lot of people would consider that to be the golden age of bodybuilding. So this was like when you had Lee Haney, uh, you know, Arnold, Lou Ferrigno, you had uh, Lee Priest. You had, it, 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 I don't think Lee Priest actually. But there was a lot of guys back then in the golden age that a lot of people would consider to be the most iconic physiques of all time. And uh, then you look at the 90s up until the 2000s and you see like these mass monsters and these ginormous men with these big giant muscle bellies, right? And you look at the, the comparison between like the 80s, 60s, and then the 2000s, the 2010s, it's like it's night and day. Like these guys are literally putting on like 80 more pounds of muscle without losing any type of um, definition. A lot of people would look at Arnold. A lot of people would look at uh, all these older guys and they would go, these guys look way better. Like what is going on? It's just things change, right? Times change. So, like, a lot of people nowadays would probably think um, Chris Bumstead is the ideal physique. I agree. I agree. But that doesn't mean that there isn't a place for the the, the, the bodybuilding nowadays, right? So, I understand why so many people would look at plus-size people nowadays and go, oh, man, 
Why do we have these fat ass models that can barely breathe walking on the fucking stage that are obviously super unhealthy and they can barely even put one leg in front of the other leg because they're so massive. Like the girth of the leg itself is so massive that it's like tough to put it over the other leg. I, I really get that because it's the same thing with like bodybuilding nowadays when you see these guys walking up on stage and they're literally like hyperventilating because they've been dehydrating themselves for like four days straight <laughs> and they've been taking so much drugs to ensure that they're the most apex uh, voluptuous this they possibly can but it is what it is times have changed I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing um a lot of these a lot of the stuff that we have nowadays even though we traded one bad for another I don't know, man. Let me know what you guys think down below about the opinion. I don't watch runway models, so I have no fucking idea. I do watch bodybuilding. Um, anyway. All the comments were girls agreeing. I want to say I hope that it's maybe middle school or high school age girls that are saying nasty stuff like that. I do not think that any high school or middle age girl, sorry, middle school girls are looking back to the 2000s on runway models. Most of the women that are probably saying that are probably women that are in their 30s or 40s that probably lived through the era of the golden age of Victoria's Secret models or whatever because uh, why the fuck would you invest any time in understanding the the cultural impact of a Victoria's Secret model from 2001? <laughs> do you have better shit to do in 2024 than to look back at these runway models? Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I just don't think that the people that are watching this shit are middle schoolers or high schoolers. I think that's fucking crazy, bro. If you ever talk to a middle school or high school nowadays, they have, <laughs> dude, no way, man. They got better shit to go on. They're, they're, they're scrolling through TikTok. They're, they're rashing their friends and they're telling each other uh, terrible, disgusting things over the internet and saying things that make no sense to me or you. Um, hashtag Slay Queen Edges and things like that. But I'm just going to let you know, a lot of you are in for a rude awakening. Several of the girls that were bone thin in high school and middle school, elementary school. Oh, this is weird um, because this all binges on the fact that these are high schoolers or middle schoolers. I know what she's going to say. I know what she's going to say. The girl, some of the girls you went to high school with are fat now. And that's true. But the difference is like the reason why people get fat post high school is because um, your diet sucks. And maybe the diet that you had when you were a kid. Uh, people, as people get older, people tend to become more sedentary and they have less opportunities to walk or use their bodies in a, in a very aerobic way. And they're usually sitting down here in the West. We have that privilege. And a lot of those people do tend to gain weight because they're ordering out. They make more money. So they're going to order out and they're meal substituting. So maybe they're eating cookies and candies instead of actual like solid meals. And what tends to happen over a period of time is like maybe that first year you don't seem to gain that much weight. But that second or third year, oh shit, I gained 30 pounds, right? Fourth year, maybe you gain another 30 pounds. Fifth year, maybe you gained 20 pounds, maybe you lost 10 pounds, right? But that sixth year, you gained 50. And that happens, over, that happens you know, progressively over years and things such as so forth. And it takes a lot to maintain weight. A lot of people have no idea that when you're sitting down for eight, nine, 10 hours a day, it's very easy for you to pick up that there your phone and order Uber Eats. It's very easy for you not to find excuses to go walk and, you know, do other stuff like that. So I, I could totally understand what she's going to say with this. But I, like I said, I don't think many people that are posting that shit about the 20s, the 2000s, early Victoria's Secret models are the individuals that you're talking about. I just don't think that's the case. <laughs> I don't think, and by the way, I don't even think this is the burn that you want to say it is, which is like, oh yeah, if you think that the women on the Victoria's Secret models uh, were really good, well, guess what? By the time you're 25, you're going to be obese as fuck and you're not going to be able to walk upstairs and you're not going to be able to put one leg in front of the other. Like, what kind of burn is that shit? Like, oh yeah, when you're 25, you're going to be fat as fuck too. You're not going to be saying that. No, that's not how that works at all, bro. That shit is, that shit is actually crazy as hell to say. As a lot of people are, as a lot of kids are, um, that bullied me as soon as they graduated. Bro, what is this pick me ass shit? Oh yeah, these girls that bullied me, guess what? They bullied me for being fat, guess what? They got fat too. What? What? Dude, what? That's crazy as hell. That'd be like me. <laughs> I got bullied for being white, right? I got bullied for being white. I went to an all black school, okay? And I did get bullied for being white. That's okay. It is what it is. I was the oddball. I was the oddball out. It was it was okay. I eventually like got in there and you know adopted some of the cultural norms and things like that. Um, assimilated as you will. But a lot of these people, I would never look back and be like, well, you know, that one kid that I knew that got shot in the back, that one kid I knew that's now in jail for killing somebody or whatever. I would never look at these kids and go, bro, like they deserve it because they did that. Nah, bro. Like, what are you fucking talking about, bro? These are like, these are children, right? When I was in school, I was a children. You were a children. Now, granted, were you an asshole children? Probably. But it's okay because we were all asshole children. We all smelled like must. We all were busty. We all had things going on in our lives that we didn't have any control over and we maybe took that out on other people. Um, what matters is like how you manage to live your life post that age um, because 
that's ultimately like when you're in high school, bro, when you're in middle school, this is a very, very closed in environment. And you you only really enact you really only act around these people that are around you. Once you get onto the real world, you realize nobody gives a fuck about you. So all that shit that you said and all the things that you did are irrelevant for the most part. So um, I see where she's going with this, but like, so the fuck what, dude? You got bullied when you were in high school. Uh, were those people assholes at the time? Yeah, they're probably way better now. A lot of them probably learned their lesson. A lot of them probably grew up to be better people. Um, and I know a lot of people like to sit there and go, uh, karma. A lot of people like to sit there and go, karma. Oh, yeah, well, they bullied me in high school. So, like, I know by the time they're 25, they're going to be obese or fuck. No, that's not really how it works, dude. Uh, there are many people that are shit people that are gajillionaires that live great, amazing lives, and they're shit people. It is what it is, okay? Like, try to just work on making yourself better. It's okay. And developed more and had kids, what have you. A lot of them put on a lot of weight. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I can tell. You're, you're, okay, look. It's fine to say you don't think there's anything wrong with that, but you're implying there is something wrong with that. You do understand that, yeah? You do understand you're using that as like a, guess what? This is bad, and it's going to happen to you too. You're literally using You could say you're not, but that's what you're implying, okay? When you say those words, that's what you're implying. Oh, you know, they stop posting. I so fucking hate when people say that shit. That'd be like someone going like, oh, yeah, I mean, like, I would never, like, I would never put on weight. I don't, I, I think putting on weight is actually bad, disgusting. It's really, really bad for you. Um, but there's nothing wrong with it. Like, I would never, you know, if you want to put on weight, that's completely fine. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's fine. Dude, what are you talking about, dude? You're implying this shit's bad. Many photos, and I just know, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I can tell, you know, they stop posting so many photos, and I just know they're struggling. And I hate that for them, but you're in for a rude awakening. Wow. What's some, this is some pick me ass shit. Oh, they're not posting any pictures anymore because they got fat. And I hate that for them. What the fuck are you talking about? But you're so powerful because you could post your pictures because you've always, you always been fat? What the fuck? I just don't understand. Like, are y'all okay? I don't know. <laughs> this person is literally projecting their insecurities onto the internet and then sitting here going like, are y'all okay? Oh my God, dude. Can you look in the mirror real quick? With this whole resurgence of fat phobia and thin spo is on the internet, but it's really scary. It's giving early 2000s. I'm not a fan. And I know y'all are going to say, of course you would say that you're a fat, a fat woman. A lot of y'all will never be on Ashley Graham's level, okay? Even at her plus size, because she's really average looking, not average looking, but an average body size and weight to me. She I think Ashley, Ashley Graham looks all right. I don't know why so many people think that she looks so good. I looked up a couple pictures from her. She's all right. She's all right, dude. She's probably like a five or a six, maybe. She's one of the sexiest women alive. Ah, ah, I don't know about that, dude. <laughs> what? Your opinion, definitely. Uh, I'm in the, definitely the majority of people here. Sure, a lot of people might think that Ashley Graham's like, you know, great at what she does. I'm sure she's a great model. I'm sure she has that walk down pack and I'm sure that she has to do a lot of things in order to maintain that model status. I'm not sleeping on the fact that she has to put in a lot of work on the back end. Um, and I don't mean back end as in like the butt talks, but I mean like the back end in the sense of like setting up these appointments, um, getting people that are gonna help her out in these, in these places, uh, walking, getting the walk down pack. I'm sure it's not easy. I'm not doubting that she's not skillful, but to say she's one of the sexiest women on the planet, that's kind of, that's, I don't know about that. I think that might be your way of trying to put yourself in that same category since she's plus size and you're plus size and you can try to tr draw those two things together. Not average looking, but an average body size and weight to me. She is one of the sexiest women alive. A lot of you can't accept the fact that just because you don't find someone attractive or sexy, that doesn't mean that nobody does. I have. I don't doubt that people find her, that's not what people, okay, look, dude. Like if we were to use that as a, a as an, a, a metric, that's like somebody saying, uh, oh yeah, I find furries attractive. Therefore, a lot of people like that doesn't mean that furries are not attractive look i'm sure you can find whatever you want attractive nobody's doubting that right if you want to sit there and go into a petco and look at a goldfish and think man i can't that should look good as fuck i can't wait to get home and slide my meat into that that's i get it right you you might find that more attractive than somebody else right but that doesn't necessarily mean that it is attractive that just means that you find it attractive right so if you're sitting here and you're objectively saying that ashley graham is like the sexiest woman on the planet holy fucking shit that's crazy as hell to say that's obviously not true right objectively speaking it cannot be true i've been in a loving relationship for a long time now when i was single i had no problem you're, you're so you're in a relationship and your boyfriend or whoever's in your whoever you are in a relationship with doesn't care that you're obese loving relationship to 2024 right here loving relationship definitely loving relationship somebody that doesn't acknowledge your weight in any way somebody that doesn't tell you hey man when you walk up these stairs you know we live in this apartment there's no elevator access and we live on the seventh floor and you're walking up that third step and that third flight and that shit is gassing you and you got to stop to take a breath 
Does your partner ever say, maybe we got to work on this. Maybe we got to lose some weight. Maybe we got to actually like, you know, get, get behind this and understand that this is probably not a good thing, right? That you're out of breath. You're only 25. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Maybe she's not 25. She's probably like 35 or something like that. But the point I'm making is like, mm, loving relationship depends. Finding. Maybe in the way she thinks, right? Kind of like how she thought that Ashley Graham was like a 10 out of 10. Suitors, okay? Just because you did it for a long time now. When I was single, I had no problem finding suitors. Okay. I think a lot of times people tend to think that just because they can get hashtag manses uh, or men that have sex with them, that doesn't necessarily mean that those people are willing to date you. That doesn't necessarily mean those men are there to, um, you know, court you for the long term. A lot of guys will 100% be in it just for the just to smell your vagina and i mean a lot of guys dude and any woman will tell you this any woman that's on a dating app any woman that um and i've always said this dude any woman past the age of about 14 knows this immediately that every guy wants to have sex with them women are immediately fetishized as soon as they hit puberty and women have never not had an opportunity to have sex with whoever they want to okay so when you're sitting here and you're going i've never not had the option to find like a, a court have a guy court me i don't doubt that but that's not really anything special at all every woman has the ability to get that and now sure there might be a couple women that will sit there and go ah, i've never really been approached by men i've never had a guy do this i'm sure i'm sure there are plenty of women that never had those examples but that doesn't take away that the majority of women do the majority of women are having guys that hit them up on consistent basis that try to smell their vaginas that try to tell them they're beautiful that just to get them in bed just to have sex with them just to do whatever the fuck now are those guys sticking around probably not probably not because they're just in it they're just in it for the short term, and maybe they're they're there for a little bit longer than the short term, but they're definitely not wifing you up. They're definitely not the dudes that are going to stick around. So I get what you're saying, but, like, who cares? Who the fuck cares, bro? Who the fuck cares? You had a whole bunch of guys that wanted to have sex with you? I don't care. And in a loving relationship for a long time now. When I was single, I had no problem finding suitors, okay? Just because you don't like something doesn't mean everybody doesn't. It's yeah, but you're severely reducing the amount of like people that would be interested in that. You do understand that, right? Like as the price goes up on something, people reduce the amount that they're gonna buy that. So like for instance, um, when the PlayStation 5 came out, $500, that was not too bad for a PlayStation 5. But nowadays when that price of the PlayStation 5 Pro is $700 and you're getting less and people are looking at that and going, it's not worth it. Not many people are buying it. And you know why? Because the price went up. And the same case here, when your weight goes up, not many people are interested in it anymore because it's not as attractive as it would have been if you the price was lower or if your weight was lower. So I understand what you're saying and that there will be guys or people out there that are gonna be attracted to you regardless of what you look like. But is that really any type of metric that we're gonna judge based off of? Like just because a guy thinks you're attractive at 450, do you think that there's gonna be more guys or less guys that are gonna be attracted to you at 250? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like this is such a such a really, really weird hill to die on. Like, I, it's almost kind of like you're not putting the, the judgments together. Victoria's Secret, their fashion show is about the sexiness, lingerie, and fat women, plus size women, mid-size. I'm struggling to actually even understand what lingerie is even for. Is lingerie for women or for men? Like, I thought that a lot of men, for a long time, all right? I remember growing up and watching um, like old cartoons of women coming out and they wore lingerie and I was like, wow, guys must really like this lingerie stuff, right? Because that's the way they made it seem. Um, but nowadays, they just kind of think it's not for men, right? Like women are just buying lingerie because they think it's cool. Is that what it is? Kind of like when guys buy like Darth Vader helmets and like, uh, you know, like uh, uh, knight in shining armor sets so they could put it on. Not for women, not for anybody. They're just putting it on because they think it looks cool. It's just like, oh, I'm going to like pose a picture. I'm going to like RP as like a King Arthur today or something like that, right? Is that what it is? I don't know because I've never been in a scenario in my entire life where i've talked to women and they go i have lingerie um i have like two sets of lingerie i have this red one and i have this blue one which one do you want me to wear and i'm just saying like i don't like what are you even talking about lingerie dude what the fuck i'm naked uh pff, what i don't want you to wear anything what are you talking about like have you ever seen a guy literally say i want a woman to wear lingerie panties okay under you know like the, the under stuff that's cool but like the lingerie why would i want you to take stuff off and then put stuff on just to take it off again I don't know, man. I, I, maybe there's like some novelty to it, but I've never saw it. You know, this is my own personal bias kicking in, right? I don't get it. I personally don't get it, man. I just, maybe if you were RPing, you know, like uh, if you wanted to dress up like a Japanese schoolgirl, um, that's cool, right? I mean, personally, I don't like wearing that stuff. Uh, I don't think I look very good dressed up as a Japanese schoolgirl, but I'm saying like if you wanted to do that and there's like a novelty to that, I can kind of understand that a little bit more than lingerie, but personally, I don't really get lingerie. Like I just don't get it. The sexiness of the female body because you're putting on clothes. I don't know. Like, I mean, kind of, maybe, I don't know. Somebody let me know. Their fashion show is about the sexiness, lingerie, and fat women, plus size women. Dude, like I was watching that Ashley Graham one where she was, where she was wearing lingerie and it had fucking wings. Can you imagine literally somebody coming into your room? Hey, babe, 
guess what I got on? And then she like, struggles to get into the fucking doorway because the wings are so massive. They're like clipping onto the sides of the door frame. She's like, oh, hold up. Gotta go inside. Oh, oh, damn. I fucked up the fucking wings on the side of my back because the door frame was not wide enough for me to slide through. Well, sorry, the, 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 the wings give me an extra like two feet on each direction. Oh, man, fuck, dude. What are you doing, dude? Who's, who's trying to have sex with somebody with wings on their back? That's like the most unpractical thing ever, dude. What am I even gonna do with the wings? What the hell? mid-sized women like ashley graham they are very desirable i'm really so, man what do you all okay, right first of all dude you can't just tell me that they're desirable because you think they're desirable what the fuck are you talking about dude i think fucking you know i i think enemas are desirable you know what i'm talking about prostate exams on the regular just just for shits and gigs i think that they're desirable you see what i'm talking about like what are you fucking talking about dude hoping that it's maybe just school-age girls that were liking that post and commenting it's not and agreeing with it but you'll find out you'll find out when you're older you'll uh well most of those girls are probably older right most of the fucking people like for instance when you sit there and go oh um people that shit on Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, i bet they're like young children i bet they're like kids in you know middle school or high school no none there's not a single person that plays Yu-Gi-Oh that isn't above the age of like 28 there's not a single one there's just not sorry no children are playing this game it's all grown men with giant mustaches and musty armpits that's all of them that's every single one same thing with like star wars bro now sure there's a demographic of people that like star wars but if you looked at the demographic of people that are like really in touch with like say for instance uh, the prequels it's mostly like older men it's mostly guys that are in their 30s um so like when you say this shit i and you're talking about a very particular genre in the same way that for instance i like the prequels i like the prequels of star wars so like from episode one two and three because i grew up on that shit right i relate more to like the clone troopers anakin skywalker and obi-wan kenobi in the same way that these people that are watching these 2000s era uh the victoria's secret models are probably the same age as me right because they grew up with that same thing so it's like uh, maybe like you don't know what the fuck you're talking about i don't think it's school age girls going back watching 2000s compilations of, of victoria's secret models walking down the runway and like oh my god this she looks so pretty ashley graham is 350 Ugh. i don't think anybody's doing that Find like out none of those people that are that age at least frontal lobe develops just because you're skinny doesn't mean and also this idea of like your frontal okay look but by, by the time you're about 16 the majority of who you are as a person is already fully developed now as you get older you do get you do get smarter obviously you get more mature but most of the growth that people get from the about from the time of 16 to like 25 where people say that like your brain fully develops which is not true by the way when you're 25 that's just the most growth that you'll ever achieve in the rest of your life your brain still develops and still grows as you get older the difference is like a lot of people have this fallacy of like 25 is like the bet like that's when you're you're finally developed as a person no it's not how it works the main difference between somebody that's 18 and somebody that's 28 is experience for the most part that you're better than anyone and just because you say that but you're literally projecting so much insecurity and you're literally like oh i have a i have a relationship i'd never thought i've never had a problem getting a man's mm. and guess what you're gonna be fucking fat you're in a rude route for you're in for a rude awakening like aren't you literally exactly what you're saying to love develops that just because you're skinny doesn't mean that you're better than anyone and just because you're plus size or mid size that doesn't mean that you're not sexy and beautiful this is a sad person right here bro projecting so much insecurity i saw a lot of people commenting stuff like but it's supposed to be they're supposed to be angels they're supposed to be perfect i think ashley graham is perfect well i don't think anybody's supposed to be perfect right is that really what we're going for they're supposed to be perfect really is that really what it is i think this is a way to defeat your argument that's kind of crazy as hell if people are arguing that these women are supposed to be perfect some of these people got some of these women got bunions you know what i'm talking about some of these women got some athlete's foot directly all all on their leg and stuff like that i mean i don't think that's perfect um i don't think the argument should be whether or not they're perfect it should be like to ide idealize the female form right is that what i thought that's always what that was um it's not i mean i know that there's like males that do that stuff too but most guys just look like big triangles Sorry, big, big rectangles, like longer rectangles. And some rectangles are slightly wider on the top than the bottom, but mm, for the most part, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Somebody let me know. I see nothing wrong with her at all. Oh, well, that makes a lot of sense given the fact that you're literally obese. I wouldn't change anything about her. I think she is perfect just the way she is. Are you perfect exactly the way you are? Even though you literally are obese and you're struggling to do regular stuff or 
Sure, whatever, bro. <laughs> go ahead. Go off, queen. Hashtag slay queen edges. Tell us how great you are. Because make no mistake about it. When she says, I think Ashley Graham is beautiful and spectacular or whatever, this will directly correlate to her. This is her literally telling us how much she feels good about herself, which is obviously not true. Because this woman is obviously feeling deep insecurities about her weight, which is one of the reasons why she has to keep flexing that she has a boyfriend and that it doesn't matter about weight because guess what? You're going to gain weight ultimately, so it doesn't really matter. Like this woman is obviously feeling deeply insecure about her weight. With her cellulite, with her thick thighs, with her everything. I wouldn't change anything. She is 100% perfect to me and to a lot of other people. Great. I was really I was really disheartened to see so many girls or women. Like, I'm used to seeing stuff like that from boys. Well, you, the thing is, um, not many dudes are watching, like, runway shows. Like, have you ever talked to a guy before? If, you're wa if, you, if you know a guy that's, like, watching runway shows, there's, like, a 40% chance that guy's gay. Like, I, I, well, I've never seen that before. What are you talking about? Most guys nowadays are, like, watching, uh, I don't know, like, One Piece and, 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 like, not washing their assholes. And you're talking about you think that guys are, like, sitting here obsessing over which runway models are more attractive than others? What the fuck are you talking about? What? Where? <laughs> How? Men. But what are we doing? The way that y'all are acting like fat women have just taken over Victoria's Secret fashion show. Those are the only two women that I saw that I've seen anything about. I didn't watch it, but those are the only two women that I've seen people making fun of and making these think pieces and complaining about. Two? <laughs> Few people? A lot of these people only see what they want to see because they don't actually care about truth. A lot of a lot of people are working under the assumption that human beings are, are truth-seeking individuals. We're not. A lot of people just want to see what they want to see to reconfirm their own biases over and over and over again. And I'll give you a really good example. I think Vegito is stronger than Gogeta. And I watch a ton of videos just to confirm my bias. I like Super Saiyan 4 more than I like Super Saiyan God. Therefore, I'm going to watch a lot of videos that confirm my bias that Super Saiyan 4 is obviously stronger than Super Saiyan God. A lot of people do the same thing on this particular front. Um, they believe that Ashley Graham is more attractive than most women or they think that they're the most attractive woman and they only see, oh my God, everybody's saying terrible, disgusting stuff about Ashley Graham. I'm sure that there, there are plenty of people that are saying terrible, disgusting stuff about her, but th that doesn't take away that there are other people that are probably saying the same things about the other models on stage, but you're not seeing that because you're only choosing to look at the Ashley Graham stuff. So when, the, when these people say that stuff, they're not telling the truth. They're obviously not telling the truth. There's no way that out of like, I don't know how many models were on stage. I'm gonna guess 20 models. Let's say, I don't know, I could be wrong. Let's say hypothetically 20 models and there's only two that are plus size. Are you telling me that out of the 18 other models, nobody said anything negative about any single one of those? Are you crazy? No, that's insane, bro. What are you talking about? Y'all acting like the whole thing is ruined. What's going on? <laughs> Y'all need to reel it in. Y'all are in for a surprise. And I hate that for you. I hate that it might take you putting on some weight to realize some things, but all bodies are beautiful. All women are beautiful, okay? Well Maybe not all of them, right? That's kind of a crazy ass thing to say, bro. Come on now. What? Are we serious right now? All women are beautiful or all men beautiful? What? What are you crazy, bro? If every okay, okay, I'm gonna break this shit down. If the what's the average penis size here in America? What five six inches, something like that? Small, obviously, but five six inches. Uh, if the if, if the majority, the reason why the majority uh, penis size in America is five inches, because that's what the majority of men have, okay? Now, if the majority of men in America, say, had eight inches, then the average penis size would be eight inches. If everybody is beautiful, then suddenly nobody is beautiful, because beautiful is a very extreme category of somebody that looks very good, right? So, like, that's, that's the aesthetic of somebody. So, that's a very extreme aesthetic. Everybody is beautiful, therefore nobody is beautiful because now you just put everybody back on the bar of average. So, given that information, no, not everybody is beautiful. It's okay that you think that they are, it's dumb, but that's not true. That's not how it works. And if you think everybody is beautiful, then like, <laughs> why were you single for so long? You know, why did you think, why didn't you just go for somebody? Like, what? It, it, it just doesn't make sense. I hate when people say this shit. Realize. Something. And by the way, you saying like, oh yeah, everybody's beautiful, this and that, you're gonna have to gain weight. You're literally implying that if I gain weight, I'm gonna have to like get uglier or I'm gonna have to like imbue myself with the, the terribleness of being fat to understand what it is to be fat and understand that everybody's beautiful exa exactly the way they are, which is not true because you're literally telling me that fat people are beautiful. I mean, just, okay, whatever, bro. But all bodies are beautiful. All women are beautiful, okay? <laughs> but Ashley Graham and Paloma Assessor, is that her last name? Two of the baddest bitches alive. Well, I don't know about that one.
Y'all are weird. Y'all are weird for saying some of the stuff that you've been saying. Kind of going crazy right now. A lot of projection here, dude. How about we let the you know the average person identify who is the most beautiful person alive? Like, I don't know about you. Like, who the fuck are you? You're obviously incredibly biased. I think a lot of you are angry that you make your whole life about striving to be as thin as possible. You're literally the exact opposite of that person, dude. You got to calm down with this projection. And not achieving it. And you see somebody like Ashley Graham feeling herself looking bad as ever on the Victoria's Secret runway. And y'all are mad. Y'all are mad because you see that she doesn't starve herself and she's confident in her body the way it is. And you feel like, oh my God. Why would you assume that people are starving themselves, dude? What are you talking about? You don't think that Ashley Graham, in order to attain the size that she is, you don't think that she's practicing some form of like dieting? You don't think that she's like cutting out certain foods or trying to make her body to look a certain way and all this other stuff do you not think that she's doing that because like would you count that as starving or no like do you not think like what is your definition of starvation because like most of the time you people will sit there and say restricting or like somebody that just cuts a certain food out or whatever is restricting or you know starving themselves which is not the case a calorie deficit is not you starving yourself bro why doesn't she hate herself like why isn't she trying to be thin like i am you don't have to, okay? Cool. Thin bodies are beautiful. Mid-sized bodies are beautiful. Plus-sized bodies are beautiful. And I wish y'all could get that through your heads. Just because you don't like something doesn't mean everybody else doesn't, too. I'm re Nobody's saying that, though. You're, like, projecting OD right now. I'm really hoping that it was just younger girls that just haven't... I say, it was, like, the third or fourth time she said this, dude. I'm, a, I'm gonna let you know right now. It's not. It's not. It's mostly, like, probably women that are in the 30s or 40s. Oh, yeah. Mentally. I, and by the way, when she says this... When she says, like, oh, yeah, I hope it's these women that don't have their brains developed yet, she's by, like, implication, she's saying her brain is developed. So she knows how to think about these things properly, which she obviously doesn't because she's super biased on this. If that was grown women in that comment section. <sighs> Anyways, I love y'all. That would just mean that she's smarter, right? Have you seen this video? It's from a wedding content creator. It's a real simple. Forehead B. Oh, just bride and bridesmaids in their dressing gowns and then a transition into bride and bridesmaids in their dresses for the wedding, right? Nothing groundbreaking, but the comments are horrendous. Now, I don't want to tag them. I don't want to stitch them because I don't want to draw more attention to this, but the bride is fat. And that is, of course, why the comments are horrific. So I get fat phobic comments and people will say, well, you as a fat person and other fat creators get these similar comments. Put yourself out there. You put your body and your opinion out there. And so you deserve what you get, right? But this bride didn't put her body and opinion out there. For all I know, she doesn't even have TikTok. In fact, I hope she doesn't because then she won't have read all those comments. Um, the wedding content creator put it out there. And I'm not saying that she did anything wrong. She's probably proud of this work. She probably posts every couple that she covers. I'm pretty sure if you're posting um, like stuff on the internet about your product or whatever, and you're taking pictures of somebody's wedding or whatever, I'm pretty sure you need to get some type of you need to get some some you need to ask the bride you need to ask the people that are within question in order to have that information or uh, pictures be posted upon the internet so if that person gave the go ahead on post that stuff online i i probably do you think they just took those pictures and just post them on the internet without asking those people like that's that's kind of insane i like, don't don't you need somebody to write off on that no there's no checks and balances in place you just like take pictures of whatever the fuck you want at a private event <laughs> as a wedding photographer and just post it on the internet what are you talking about aren't you literally a wedding photographer don't you need to ask these people to post this stuff on the internet i could be wrong on this but i'm pretty sure it's a like common practice to ask the individual, get a sign off, to see a waiver, to, to use this stuff in another place. But maybe I'm wrong. Somebody can let me know. I think that she did anything wrong. She's probably proud of this work. She probably posts every couple that she covers. And why should she have to censor what she puts out because she knows that people are going to be nasty if... I, I just don't understand a lot of times when people like post stuff on the internet. Like for some reason, these people don't get that you can't choreograph who's going to see your stuff you could post your stuff to like a closed off reddit or like a closed off community or whatever the fuck and think that that's not going to like interfere with anybody or whatever sure that could work um maybe like a private discord or something like that or whatever but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to like not get the reception like you're posting this shit up public public places on the internet like twitter youtube Twi tiktok all this other stuff then yeah, people are gonna look at it and people are gonna watch it. And you sitting here going, why should they have to like choreograph or like, you know, not upload these pictures? What are you talking about? If you make stuff and you put it on the internet and you don't want people to look at it and judge it, then why are you posting it on the internet? That doesn't make any sense at all. Why would you do anything then if that's the case? People are gonna judge it, okay? We're all appeasing each other. Now I understand it sucks that you don't get the, the reception that you want, but that's not how it works. You're doing shit on the internet, dude. You're gonna, regardless of whether or not it gets the correct reception or not, it's, you you reap what you sow.
if it's a fat person, right? It does bring up an interesting conversation about should this content creator have this out there? Should they have anticipated this cruelty? Should it's not about whether or not they anticipated the cruelty or not. If they want to post this stuff on the internet, then it is what it is. Um, you just have to understand that if you do stuff online, it stays there and that people are going to respond to it. And now it's not exactly what you want, but it is what it is. Uh, now, it's probably not bet good for the mental health of that individual to see that they're getting a whole bunch of hate and stuff like that for that particular video and things like that. But, dude, if, if this is what you want to do and you want to be a plus-size wedding photographer, like, that's just what it has to be. You're going to have to post internet stuff and you're going to have to get that type of reception. It is what it is, right? What the fuck do you want at that point? Did they, when the comments started getting nasty, hid in the video? Like, who knows? Now, to their credit, they are deleting the nasty comments, I think, as quickly as they can. And there are a lot of positive comments trying to drown it out as well. I know that, like, it depends on how much um, hate you're going to get on the internet. Like, when that video I did on Samira, um, and she, she like, posted her video or whatever, people came to my um, Instagram and all that stuff saying a whole bunch of really terrible, disgusting stuff. I thought at first, like, maybe I should delete the comments, but then I thought about it, and I was like, eh, fuck it. Like, it is what it is. Like, if people, if these people on um, my comment section sitting there going, like, I'm racist or I'm sexist or whatever the hell, um, they could say that shit. It's fine, dude. It is what it is. It's the internet, right? Like, let people do what they got to do. It, it probably be better to like you know address it and stuff like that talk your shit as well anyway not that it would be right that just because i'm fat and i post on tiktok that i get nasty comments but it seems worse because of the context now let's just think this woman just got married let's say she got married a week ago i don't know when she got married and she paid someone to come and record her day and they posted their video on tiktok uh like they probably do with all the other weddings they cover and the deluge of absolute horror in that comment section. Imagine that you're on your honeymoon and you're like, oh look, our video's been posted on TikTok by our content creator. And then you see that everyone is just talking about how hideous and disgusting you are because you are fat. And let's imagine that because I am planning a wedding as a plus size person. And so I understand that the wedding industry is not built for me. Let's imagine that- Nothing if is built for you. But what, what, what is even the purpose of this? Like, okay, like I said, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. When you record this stuff or you're doing wedding photographers, I'm pretty sure there has to be a sign off. There needs to be a sign off if you're going to post that somewhere. I'm pretty sure. And if they do post it somewhere and it gets negative reception, what? Am I supposed to be upset? I signed off on it, dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, maybe you could go down the line of like, this is not exactly what I thought it was going to be, but I'm pretty sure the wedding photographer also probably didn't think that was going to be what it was. So it's probably nobody's fault in that particular front. What are you even getting from this? Are you like, are you going to sue the wedding photographer for not taking down the picture or the videos or whatever the fuck? Are you going to like exchange words? Are you going to, what, like, what can you even do in that situation, dude? You signed off on it, right? It was a real effort for this bride to find a wedding dress that she liked and fit her to oh, survive the constant battery of you should lose weight for your wedding. True. Or you should just lose weight in general because that would make you healthier. She's already had to compromise probably in her wedding planning process. And Everybody's going to have to compromise on everything, okay? Uh, money is a big factor on compromisation and also obviously weight. So when you're sitting here going like she probably had to compromise on finding dresses. Yeah, when you're, you know, plus size or you're obese, it's going to be difficult to find clothes that fit you. I don't know why this would not apply when it comes to having wedding dresses, bro. Of course. Yes. Duh. Yeah. I don't even know what the point of even bringing this up other other than just to victimize her in the sense of like, oh my God, she had to put up with so much. Shut the fuck up, dude. Like if she wanted to, if she wanted to get married while being fat and she thought it was hard to find wedding dresses, obvious fucking Lee. Yes, it's going to be very hard when you're one legged to find a pair of jeans. Yes. I, 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 why would you expect anything other than that? She finally gets there and she's like, great, I'm doing this thing. And then everyone is nasty about her in their TikTok comments. So I just don't understand. You do understand. You know why they're nasty. You know why they're, <laughs> I hate when people are purposely ignorant. You know why, bro. Stop acting like this. What possesses people to do this? It's social media, okay? Um, if you don't want to get the backlash, then don't post it on the internet, okay? Don't talk about it. Don't do that. I don't know what to tell you other than that. Now, I understand that the other person, the other party within question posted that video on the internet, but I probably like 100% sure that individual got a sign off to do that. Now, do, you can go ahead and say that individual probably didn't know that it was going to get that same type of reception, but go fuck yourself. What do you want? You signed off on it, dude. Like, who, why am I supposed to get upset by this? What? What am I supposed to do, dude? What? Yes. This woman had a nice day. She just wanted a nice day like everyone else, and I don't actually- So what, dude? What are you talking about, man? If you're posting stuff to the internet and it doesn't get the reception that you want, I don't care. You know, I'm just assuming. And instead of just being like, oh, I'm gonna scroll on, or, oh, congrats. Why are you, I hate when these people 
instead of like doing something about it themselves, they they instead rely on other people to do it for them. People that don't know them, people that have no agency, people that don't give a fuck about you, people that are actively being uh, malicious. Why would you expect anything other than people just continuously doing the bad thing? Why? Why? Why would you? Why would you? Why would you cede over your agency to a a, a public variant of the internet and think that they're gonna do the right thing? What are you crazy? Are you insane? Why would you expect that? What? How old are you? People are like, you're so fat. Ugh. Just, just what possesses you to do that? What possesses you to? What possesses you to make this video about people possessing uh, the ability to not or do something? Like you do understand you're literally doing the same thing. Like it's the same question. Why'd you make this video? Probably the same reason why those people decided to make that comment. Okay. Because they wanted to, because they had the agency to do so because they wanted to be mean the same way that you wanted to make this video about them being mean. It's the same shit. Like you just look in the mirror. There's a reason why people color the entire experience that someone has from this special and expensive day that they have put a lot of time and effort. Into. I don't like, you're, why are you expecting other people to care about that though? Like, why do you expect anybody to care about that shit at all? Like, it doesn't matter, bro. Like, it's other people. They didn't put any money towards that. They're just seeing the outcome of it. Why the fuck would you? Why would you think anybody would care about that? Why? It doesn't matter to them. They're just like, like a normal person on the internet. A random person seeing you. A random other person posting pictures on the internet. Nobody cares. Yes, people are assholes. What do you want? What? What is even this complaint? What? gives you the right the comments being open I, I, they're my eyes i don't fucking i'm sorry that i'm not fucking ray charles what do you want dude what am i supposed to say what do, what, what do you want from me just tell us get land the ship you just want people to feel bad that they posted pictures on the internet you want people to feel bad that they posted those bad comments on the internet they probably do but they don't care or they just really just don't care that they post that stuff on the internet there's a reason why they said what they said <sighs> what is this virtue signaling what are you talking about dude stop acting like you're above that what possesses you to try and turn that into something negative what, for that? What person? possesses you to make this video? Person, I just, I don't understand. Stupid. All right, guys, that's the end of the video today. Um, if you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate everybody could like the video, subscribe, sharing the video, all that stuff. I'd appreciate tremendously. Make sure you hit the notification icon because we do live streams and make sure you get the notification when you see that light up and you see that I go live or I post a new video. You can see that stuff. That's also um, really amazing to keep up with all the uploads. We do a video every single day and we do a live stream almost every single day. Um, regardless of that. Uh, if you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in ring because guess what? You deserve it. You deserve the ring, the rang, the whole, the, the big thing that has a hole in it that you put your finger into and somebody says, will you be my wife? Will you be my husband? Or I don't know. Like, yeah, you deserve that beautiful thing. Um, it's, it looks great on your finger. Wow. Your fingers are so incredibly contoured, so incredibly deep, so incredibly grooved up. I love it. I love the way your fingers are looking. Of your elbows too very very moisturized super moisturized very moisturized good job on moisturizing your elbows and your armpits as well with deodorant because you know sometimes i don't want to be mean but mm, i mean you do have a nice smell but it's, you know you, you when you sweat it you sweat that's all i'm saying anyway guys if you want to check out my social media it'll be linked down below in the description uh enjoy the rest of your day guys